Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, you're very welcome. This is Reading the Past and I'm Dr Cat. Now I'm sure many, if not most of you, have heard of there being lost plays of William Shakespeare. Perhaps the most famous of these lost plays is Cardinio, and that's what I want to talk about today. Most scholars are content to date Cardinio to 1613. As such, it's one of Shakespeare's later contributions. And as with some of his other later plays, we believe that it is co-authored. Later in his career, it seems that Shakespeare is working with a partner, John Fletcher. The two of them write Two Noble Kinsmen, also in 1613, and the year previously, 1612, they had written a history play, Henry VIII, also known as All Is True. And I think I'd like to make a video about Henry VIII or All Is True, because for me, never has a play been more humorously titled. The fact that Fletcher and Shakespeare's version of the life of Henry VIII would be called All Is True is comical in the extreme, and I am going to make a video explaining why. But today we are talking about Cardinio, so let's get back on track. The argument for dating Cardinio to 1613 is supported by the fact that the records of the treasurer of the king's chamber to King James states that two payments were paid to the king's men during the year of 1613 for a play called Cardeno and one called Cardena. We believe that this refers to Cardinio. At this time, spelling is not standardised, so it's quite possible that these two slightly different names may be referring to the same, again, different play, Cardinio. So the record of court accounts point to the fact that Cardinio must have been written by 1613. However, there's also sufficient evidence, I think, to support the fact that it can't have been written much before. The character of Cardinio, as features in Shakespeare and Fletcher's play, is also a recurring figure in Miguel Cervantes' Don Quixote. Don Quixote is written and published in Spanish originally by Cervantes in 1605. However, the first English translation doesn't appear until 1612. I think, therefore, it's fairly safe for us to state that Shakespeare and Fletcher are drawing on the English translation, meaning that this play has to be produced between 1612, the date when the English translation appears, and 1613, when the court is paying for this play to be performed. For some reason, Cardinio is never published. It doesn't appear in good or bad quarto, as so many of Shakespeare's other plays did. It's also omitted by Heming and Condell from their first folio of Shakespeare's work from 1623. The next time that the play Cardinio appears in an extant official record is 1653. Humphrey Mosley approaches the station's register with 42 plays that he intends to print. In the list is a play that he titles The History of Cardinio by Mr Fletcher, and Shakespeare. We subsequently have to question his claims and his attribution. Does he actually have this text at all? Is the text that he has, if he does have it, by Fletcher and Shakespeare? Because he is the first person in an extant record to make this attribution. Tellingly, perhaps, he also doesn't follow through with printing the play. I wonder what you think that might mean. In 1727, Louis Theobald claims to be in possession of a manuscript of Cardinio by Shakespeare. Tellingly, he makes no mention of John Fletcher. He says that he has used this manuscript and reconstructed it to produce his own play, which he stages in the December of that year, 1727, at the Drury Lane Theatre. Theobald's version of the play is titled Double Falsehood, or The Distressed Lovers. As I suppose expected, Louis Theobald's double falsehood and his claims about its origins have come under quite a degree of academic scrutiny. Academics who are experts in the writing styles of Fletcher and Shakespeare have combed over this play, and most of them have agreed that what Theobald has is a play that shows fragments of work by Fletcher and Shakespeare, that he has rearranged, edited and sewn together with his own writing. Somehow, he has got hold of a manuscript that includes at least fragments of their work. 
does he have the whole of Cardinio and he's just edited bits of it together or does he just have fragments of it? If so, where does he get it? And also, crucially, where is it now? So where is the play Cardinio and how and why did it get lost? Many scholars and researchers look to the fact that it was excluded from the first folio by Hemi and Condell. And we might question why that is. And there have been a number of possible answers suggested. One is that they excluded it because it was written in collaboration. But I'm going to pull out the playlist from the first folio. As you can see, Henry VIII or All is True is there, as is Two Gentlemen of Verona both of which, as we think with Cardinio, were written in collaboration with John Fletcher. So if they're there but Cardinio isn't, it can't be about collaboration necessarily. Maybe Shakespeare wrote even less of Cardinio. It's more Fletcher than Shakespeare. So they excluded it because there simply wasn't enough of Shakespeare's work in there. Perhaps this is why they also excluded the book of Sir Thomas More, which Shakespeare certainly collaborated on, but he was simply one of the many authors that worked on this text. Another suggestion is that they didn't include it because they didn't have a copy, that there was no manuscript surviving because it burnt to the ground with the globe on the 29th of June 1613. Perhaps the play, fresh off of its early performance at the Royal Court in 1613, was new enough that no copy had been made of the text, that the only extant manuscript was in the globe when it burnt to the ground. Another less kind suggestion is that Hemi and Condell excluded Cardinio because it wasn't very good. They didn't want to tie it to Shakespeare's name because they, and perhaps others, didn't think it was worthwhile to do so. Is it possible in the 10 years that elapsed between the court performances of 1613 and the first folio of 1623, Hemi and Condell had simply forgotten about Cardinio? What is certain, and to me utterly fascinating, is that the lost play of Cardinio its reconstruction and recovery has fascinated actors, directors, playwrights and academics ever since. It's as evident in the 18th century with Louis Theobald's double falsehood as it is in the 21st. In 2009, the academic Bernard Richards reconstructed Cardinio for the stage. His group of actors put it on on a variety of stages across the country, including one at the Edinburgh Fringe, where I got to see it and I really enjoyed the production. More recently, in 2011, Greg Doran reconstructed a version of Cardinio for the RSC stage. Meanwhile, in the same year, 2011, Gary Taylor worked on and produced another reconstruction of Cardinio, which was staged at one of the Red Not Dead events at Shakespeare's Globe. So I'd love to know what you think. Why is Cardinio a lost play? Why are we so fascinated by it? Have you ever seen a reconstruction of Cardinio on the stage? If one was available, would you go and watch it? Do you think we're ever going to find Cardinio, the manuscript, whether it's a fragment or the whole thing? Where might it be? And if we do find it, would it be any good? Let me know in the comment section down below or come and find me over on my social media. I'll be leaving the links in the description box. You can follow me there and we can continue the conversation. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please let me know by hitting the thumbs up. Please also subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so that YouTube tells you when I've next uploaded. I hope you're going to have a great day, whatever you're doing. And I look forward to speaking to you all in my next video. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye for now.